Welcome to the High Ground Podcast. I'm Stevie W. I'm Callum. Okay, I'm going to throw one out here just uh, based on the uh, Mandalorian one that we've just finished recording. We mentioned something in there that we've both had to sit through. So let's see if we can talk those 10 minutes. Welcome to another in under 10 minutes. If we can make this last more than five, it's going to be absolutely fantastic. Okay, me and you, uh, yeah, anybody who knows us, and uh, we've mentioned it before if you listen to the other ones, we are both in relationships. So we're... We have had to, I've only had to put up with one of them. You've had to do some right up with all three. Fifty Shades oh. of Grey. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I had to go cinema to one of them. Same here. Mm. Okay, what was your reason for going to see that film? Well, I suppose, like, I dragged her to see Star Wars. And I, I think it was Rogue One, actually, that year. Uh, uh, Shades Darker, I think it was. Same year. And, uh... I just, you know, she, I said, is there anything you want to see? And she was like, yeah, can I go see Fifty Shades? So I was like, okay, yeah. I can't very well say no, you know. I could say you can go see it on your own, but I wanted to go and see her. I wanted to, like I had to do with uh, Train Spotting 2, Machete Kills. So just, I'm looking at her, I'm looking at her fiance as she's saying this, as I'm saying this. And... Uh, what's the other one I went to watch on my own? I watched quite a few of these uh, films on my own because you didn't want to go and see them. Want to go and see them with me? She turned mouth. Like presumably, me. yeah, I was going to say presumably you're getting the finger. <laughs> uh, well, she's going to write notes because she's not going to. Doesn't want to appear on to get on. And she's got a pen. No, uh, my argument was that I'll go and see that with you if you go and see Mad Max uh, Fury Road with me. Oh, yeah. She got the better deal. She said, Machete, I was working. She didn't <laughs> want to see it anyway. I didn't really like Machete films, I'm, if I'm honest. It was enjoyable, but it was just I'm not nonsense. a massive fan of the first one, either. But I liked it. It's just nonsense. It's not brilliant, but it's nonsense. Enough. I know, it's not as bad as Fifty Shades, but... No. <laughs> no, uh... I think there's a funny story, actually, about when I went to see that. The second one with my missus actually because um as soon as we walked in i saw you know when you go around the corner in our cinema and there's like you see all the chairs like slanting upwards yeah. to the back and i saw like the only three other men that were in the room right away and it was like they looked at me as if like oh thank god another one you know like when animals see like another yeah. animal they're like so they're not alone or you're in the pub and you're sitting thinking oh it's a bit lonely here oh there's a friend it's a bit like that. Oh. <laughs> I got one. I, I was actually in northern the other cinema in the other town, and uh, and usually because I know it doesn't matter how crap the film's going to be. I or, I don't want to I don't want to take a piss, uh, pee break, you know, during the film if I can. And uh, so I go up just as the credit the trailers the trailers are on, and I'm like uh, I'm walking back to my seat, and there's the entire admin staff from the retail job. And, and I'm like, oh, you're effing kidding me, right? Yeah. <laughs> and then the next day, uh, they were moaning because I was eating crisps throughout the whole thing. I was like, A, I wasn't. I said I was eating sweets. And B, this film was so crap. I had to have something to keep me awake. And I was eating, I was trying to get myself a sugar rush so I could actually make it through to the end without falling asleep. It was that bad. Oh, we liked it. I was like, how could you like it? The ending of it. It was terrible. It was a terrible film. The bit where he goes, you, you're just Fifty Shades of... Was it Fifty Shades of Messed Up or something? What? Something like that. And I was like, That's and... The, the where they try and name drop the title. Yeah, it works in James Bond. Yeah. It didn't work in this. It was terrible. And then it There's quite me... a few films it doesn't work in, actually. I can't think of any off the top of my head, but I have seen a few where I've been like, oh, that's a bit cringy. Yeah. When they drop it too blatantly in your face. Uh, my favourite one, my favourite one is whoever it was, you must have scared the living daylights out of them. Oh, that is quite good. Oh, no, I know which one I think is the worst. Bullet to the head. Oh, God, how many times did I say How many that? times do we have to be reminded that's what film we're watching? Yes, we know Stallone. Yeah. Thank you. I'm going to shoot you like a bullet to the head. I'm going to go <laughs> drink this alcoholic beverage like a bullet to the head. I'm going to promote a film called Bullet to the Head. I wish I'd not appeared in this film called Bullet to the Head. <laughs> I got at least 50 shades when you say it once. I'll give them that. You know what, it's one of the films I actually, I mean, I love to rest this alone. But I regret going to the cinema to watch it, just like I regret going to the cinema to see Dark Fate. 
So oh yeah, Terminator Dark Fate. Sorry, I got I got to say one thing about uh, and this. Uh, I mean, uh, this film came out. Fifty Shades of Grey came out in two thousand fifteen. Twenty twelve. Two thousand fifteen. The film did. And the first uh, one. Yeah, it says twenty fifteen. Fifty Shades of Grey, and let me just. Uh, uh, and Bad Times of El Royale came out in two thousand three years later in two thousand eighteen. Took me all that time to find out if whether or not it was just bad acting or bad script because I thought, you know, is Dakota Johnson really that bad an actress? In uh, no, she isn't. No, she's not. She's great in Bad Times and El Royale. So yeah, I actually got the question answered for me. No, it is the script is terrible and. Uh, I didn't, you know, if you want to see a, a guy that treats women like objects and objects like women, uh, then why don't we, you just watch a James Bond film, at least he's a likeable character, and, you know, uh, it was just a woman in an abusive relationship, but, oh, it's so romantic, no, it's a fucking abusive relationship, how can you, anybody see it anything other than an abusive relationship, and, you know. And when I first had the description of it, I, I thought, Oh, he sounds a bit like Batman, you know, <laughs> just billionaire playboy guy. And then, like, when you actually realise, it is a bit creepy, isn't it? Yeah. Like, gonna... you know, whatever floats your boat in, if you like getting whipped and beaten up. But, like, I don't know, yeah, it's just, he's really controlling, isn't he? And he reminds me of um, Edward from Twilight. Actually, it's, it's based on, yeah. she wrote the she wrote Twilight fan fiction, didn't she? Originally? She did. So I've got to give her credit for that. I mean, that's, that's pure brilliance. Becoming famous off of fan fiction. I mean, that's a first. Yeah. As, oh, the books are awful. If you think the script's bad, books, man. Jesus. I am not going to read those books. I, I picked up, like, I remember when it first sort of, everyone started talking about it. I picked it up in um, Waterstones, just randomly and opened in a random page. And, like, it just... Oh, I just kind of stopped about like, halfway down the page. I think one of the funniest things I've ever seen actually incidentally related to the book is, I don't know if he did a whole read-through, but there's a video of, I know, I don't think he read it, but there's a video of George Takai reading a section of it out loud, and he sort of just goes, oh my, at the end of it. It's oh. so funny. <laughs> I would, George Takai's got a great voice. I would pay to see that. He has. I would pay to see that, and he's going to see oh, it. Yeah. Like, I'd, I'd listen to the audio book, but it was him doing it. Yeah. <laughs> or Patrick Stewart. Oh, yeah, that'd be hilarious. Or Ian McKay, someone really posh that you wouldn't expect to do that. It'd just be so funny, wouldn't it? Patrick Stewart as Bullock from American Dad, reading Fifty Shades. <laughs> just playing Christian Grey. Oh, or how about Quagmire doing it? Uh, Quagmire reading. Fifty Shades. Just, just be saying giggity every second. <laughs> Using his terminology for, uh, you know, he was it Gishmoyin the, uh, you know, I can't remember. I don't want to do, I don't want to do a bad quagmire impression because I absolutely love Family Guy and American Dad. But yeah, that would... Seth McFarlane, if you're out there and you're listening to this, if you were lucky enough to have you as a listener, thank you for listening. <laughs> Which probably not, but... I would love to see American Dad or probably Good characters do Fifty Shades read it. That would be absolutely brilliant. I would, I, I think that would be a great idea in general, just doing audiobooks that with people you wouldn't expect to do them, like because of the subject matter of the book, you know, like having a really sort of tough guy with a common accent or something do like read Pride and Prejudice, like, you know, it'd just be hilarious. Like The Rock? Yeah, or like Danny Dyer or something. That would. <laughs> You know what? Uh, can I just say, if anyone is actually again, if anyone's listening, this decides they want to do something with this idea, can we have a little bit of a kickback for coming up with the idea, please? Yes, audible if you're listening. That's an ironic sentence to say, isn't it? But yeah. Oh, yeah. Amazon, please. Yeah, we we want a kickback because as you can see, the date of recording and uploading somewhere on here. Then uh, yeah, we want a kickback, please. Can we have a kickback from this? And yeah. <laughs> No, no, you know what, uh, that Dakota, the Dakota Johnson, I, I can't admit, she's, I didn't find her, uh, I know who her mum and dad is, that her mum and dad are, and her, and her grandmother, of course, but, yeah. you know, uh, 
And yeah, after watching that, you know, that's my first time I'd, had, I'd seen her. And I was like, yeah, she is absolutely nothing special. Then I watched her in Bad Times at El Royale. And I was like, she's absolutely bloody good in Bad Times at El Royale, which is a favourite movie of mine. Because it's got that Tarantino vibe to it. I still so, haven't seen that, actually. Ah, it's on the movie channels. I'm sure of it. You want to watch it. It's, it is very Tarantino. It is very good. And... You know, we uh, we, we after we saw it, we uh, went to a cinema. We went to, we went to a cinema and we had three posters. Just you know, when they have excess of posters, and just give them away. Oh yeah. And one was one side was Bohemian Rhapsody, and the other side was Bad Time at El Royale. So we got one, and it's nicely all rolled up for for when we eventually get it framed. Because the, the poster is is you know, very rare these days you get a, a film poster that you'd love to put on your wall. And yeah, times, they all look the same to me now. Yeah, the I bad like the bad times one is one I want on the wall. So we've got it all folded. We've got it all nicely rolled up. Very nice. I think that's a, that sort of an art that's died now, hasn't it? Like film yeah. posters. Yeah, I mean, when you see one that's that you're looking at and you just go, "I would love to have that." Yeah. Yeah. See the Jaws one. It's always been like the poster, hasn't it? Yeah. Simpler. I mean, yeah. My one is the one I, cause I used to have it on my wall at uni and uh, I, had, I had an original, Star well, not original, it was a reproduction of a Star Wars poster. And uh, from The New Hope, or as it was then, Star Wars. And it was, yeah, that to me, that's. And, uh, I used to, you know, the landscape posters that we used to have, that we had in the UK. They don't need to do it yeah. so much anymore. You know, go to the cinema when you was only two screens and having and having those. That was I used to always love that. But again, like you said, it's, it's lost. Well, like the um, you know, like the marquees they used to have, where it was like the letters were slightly slid in on yeah. the white background. With you know, like the um, when it had the title of the film, but it used to be like non-digital, and they put the slide the letters. Yeah, the, I, I love that. And you'd have the you yeah. We used to have that up, up at the forum. They did, and they'd have the certificates as well. Yeah. I miss all that. I miss old school cinema. I, I do. Don't... It's weird that for listeners to hear us speaking about that is in a Fifty Shades podcast. <laughs> yeah. That's the reason why, uh, you know, I started. I just thought, you know, uh, we mentioned it in the Mandalorian one, and I thought, it, 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 you know, uh, it, was, it, was a good, it was a good springboard for... Uh, for for like we were saying earlier about what the, the High Ground Podcast is, is it's a conversation. And yeah. it's, and in fact, we can actually pull off using Fifty Shades as a starting point, you know, is... Why not? Yeah, it's, and I'm still, you, you know, uh, um, when you buy the Blu-ray, it comes with a digital download code. Now, uh, yeah. so when I go through my film collection, or my digital film collection, you scroll down and it's got Fifty Shades on it because it's got all three of them because the, the the boss bought them and if my digital if my digital download collection was a was a physical collection that's the one that's got the dust on it just like the Blu-rays have yeah because I don't watch it <laughs> I will not watch it you do secretly don't you no <laughs> no no uh, that's not like, you know what if I'm going to be I'll if I'm going to be honest with you, my guilty pleasure out of my digital collection is let me put. I, I think I know what it is, but I, I've, I've got some crap in my collection. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna lie. Oh, so lie. So my digital. Okay, what what would you define as your crap? What like pick my one, guilty pleasures? You pick one out that you think is that's on a par with as embarrassing as having Fifty Shades. Probably Mamma Mia. Uh, I won't watch it because I don't like ABBA. Fam- oh, no, see, I love ABBA, but like the film is pretty bad, but it's it's like a mine and my fiance's film, sort of enjoyable. Mean Girls as well is another one like that. I haven't seen that, but that's not because... I of... probably wouldn't admit to liking it, but... You just have. Yeah, I have now, yeah. 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 I have the two. Yeah, it, 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 I do enjoy it, like it's... It's uh, when she first sort of didn't force me to watch it, but like said, like we've watched some of your crap, so watch some of mine. That um, familiar. 
I was kind of like, oh god, and I hated it. And then I watched it again recently, like with a not recently, like a while ago. And then it's kind of become like our film. Uh, I don't know. We our film is my my fiance. That's uh, our film. I suppose is uh, cowboys cowboys versus aliens. Oh yeah, see, I'm not really fond of that. John Favreau, so but my guilty pleasure. Well, if it holds significance for you, then yeah. you shouldn't have to explain yourself. So. No. But my guilty pleasure I've got in my digital collection is I've got both the Fantastic Four movies, the Chris Evans ones. I know, I like them, actually. They're quite, like, they've matured with age, I think, like a fine one. They're nonsense, and Chris Evans is good in them. He is, yeah. Just as he's good in Knives Out. That was, I love Knives Out, I'm sorry. And the quote-unquote proper Marvel films now. <laughs> yeah. You mean Captain America, my favourite, even my, one of my favourite Avengers, so, yeah. I've, I was team capping Civil War. So, yeah, that's, so that's, that's my, a guilty pleasure, that is. Not Fifty Shades. Fifty Shades is horrible. So, did you, how many other Fifty Shades have you actually seen? I think I've seen them all at some point, but not, I've only seen one of them in the cinema. I'm going to have a quick look on the third. I've seen the first one. And I and I, I do, you know, I don't like slating a film that I, that, I, that I haven't seen because that makes me as bad as all these people that slated Solo because they didn't like, they didn't watch Solo. Yeah, because... I try not to. But, um, 50... Ugh. Fifty Shades Freed. Yeah, which goes back to the, the whole Twilight thing. I eventually, last year I watched Twilight at last, all of them. It's not that they're bad films, I just found that... Uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, well, I can't remember the character's name. Very memorable characters. Uh, IMDB, Edward? thank you. Yeah. Uh, Edward Cullen. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Edward Cullen and uh, the werewolf. Oh, Jacob. Jacob. I found them creepy as really creepy characters. I found that they were yeah, creepy, not in a good way. The undertones in that whole series are really sort of, oh, I don't know, shivery, creepy. Yeah, I didn't. I, yeah. But, I, you know, I found that the, the secondary characters, the parental characters, the, the clan, the werewolves, or whatever they call them, I thought they were all nice characters who should have just hung out those two, those two assholes to, you know, get take the silver bullet, take the garlic, and live your lives happily without those two morons in your world. That's what they should have done, because uh, I'm sorry, but a werewolf that imprints itself—that's not creepy. I don't know what is. Yeah, the... I mean, yeah, because Michael Sheen's quite sort of batshit crazy, isn't he? Like. I like Michael Sheen. I'm actually watching. I've watched the first episode as a recording of Quiz, and he's good in it as Chris Tarrant. And uh, I like it. I really got to think for my Michael Sheen at the moment, anyway, because because uh, he plays a zero fail. I like a zero fail. Oh yeah, he's good at. He's very good at playing other people. Like well, that sounds really weird, but I mean, like you just said, like biographical stuff. Yeah, Fox versus Nixon. Damned United, he's brilliant on that. I still want to see that, I haven't yeah. seen that one. Yeah, it's good. I mean, I don't even like football, but it was an interesting watch. Because if you, I say, I don't do, I don't do uh, car racing, but I still love Rush and Le Mans 66. It's a perfect film. Yeah. If you should be able to, if you're a filmmaker, I mean, I know nothing about rap music uh, other than what I learned from uh, Shit Out Compton. And I'm, oh, yeah, same. And it's a film should be able. And I, I don't know, say this like I said the other day when someone asked me if I'd ever watched it. I'm surprised when I said I had. Is I consider it to be straight out of Compton to be the most important film since Schindler, since Schindler's List. But and it's a subject people wouldn't usually uh, expect me to watch. And that's that's a, a good thing. A, a film should, if it's done well enough. You should, you should better do it about a subject you know nothing about or would normally would watch and get into it so much you actually want to research the subject more. I mean, I have I have a Dr. Dre album, uh, one, the Compton album, I've got a Cube one and 
the actual the actual straight out of Compton uh, NWA album. And uh, and I don't do that type of music because but I just wanted no, to I, don't. I just wanted to see what it was about. And I've got to admit, I, I do like Ice Cube, but I like him as uh, I like him as a person. I think he's fantastic. And I like his movies that he does. And I think like I said, I think Straight Out Compton is is an important film that people should watch. Up there with Shinders Listen Black Klansman. I mean, yeah, and if you want to see someone that looks exactly like Ice Cube, like his son is just a scarily looks like him, doesn't he? Oh, he does. He's brilliant. Actually, the entire cast is brilliant in that film. Yeah, they are. See, because that's not something I would normally watch, but it got recommended to me. I think it was you, actually. Yeah. And uh, I really did enjoy it. It's not something you can say about Fifty Shades, really, is it? No. It's, no, God, no. Ooh, no. See, it's not even that... It's not even that, like you say, like the actors are that bad. I mean, they're not great, but the film's just not well made. No. Nope. In you know, I mean, I've seen Jamie Dorn in, it, in other things, and he's really good. He's supposed to be, you know, erotic and everything, and and you know, you you sit in there, and you you know, it's it's not like I mean, not to be a bit on. You sit in there, and you're not. Know, you're not turned on in any way whatsoever, and it's like you're sitting there thinking, I don't know how anyone could be turned on by this crap. Yeah. It, it, you know, there's ways of doing things, and you know, I know for censorship they had to turn down, a, they would have to tone down a lot of the, you know, a lot of the stuff to get the fever hell. Oh, it's so romantic, you know. Oh, it'd be torn otherwise, wouldn't it? Showgirls. <laughs> yeah, you know, okay, Showgirls was not that's a, a good example. Up quite a lot as well, isn't it? Like that, part this podcast. Yeah. So that's a film that keeps popping up. Yeah, like Showgirls is a terrible movie, but but you know, and there are ways of doing erotic and and I know what's her name. The, we go back to the right page on IMDb. The woman who directs it is a good director. What's her name? Uh, Sam Taylor Johnson. But that film is is it, just it's just terrible. But then again, apparently the writer E. L. James had a lot of interference in that film. Yeah, and she's an awful writer, so yeah, it's probably why. She it was you. I I just don't I just don't get it. I don't get what well, as you. Watch Jane if you're if you're running, if you're watching this if you're a female and into and you're really into your uh, Fifty Shades just watch your Jane Bond because that way you get a woman you get a guy that, especially the Connery ones because Connery smacked to smack women around. Oh, so does Roger Moore in the first two. Yeah. Before he became like the sort of Joker guy. Yeah, watch that because at least he's justified when he smacks his women around. That sounds really bad. That sentence. I'll rephrase it. At least he's justified because they're bad people. And he's trying to get yeah, it for, for Queen. They're trying to kill him. Yeah, for Queen yeah. and Country. It is yeah. never justifiable to actually smack a woman. No, although Sean Connery thinks it is, but that's for another podcast. <laughs> Allegedly, sorry. Allegedly. Uh, so I think we've gone as far as we can on this if we got voted. Yeah. It ended up not being under 10 minutes again, didn't it? Yeah. Oh. See you on another high crap podcast. See you later, guys.